It takes parents whose authority is not undermined by a meddling socialist government as what we have now in Washington. That's what it takes. <laughs> and so we have had the, the Chicana movement and the feminist movement and of course the homosexual movement and I've already told you uh, how much influence they have now in our public schools. And not only that, throughout our society, whoever would have thought that we would have to define marriage? And this is what they've done to us. But most importantly, and the one that really, really irks me more than any others is the black movement. And isn't it ironic that the very group of people who were brought to America as slaves are being used today to enslave all of Americans? Now that really hurts me being a member of that race and seeing how this happened. Now I have to tell you, I really don't remember going from being colored to Negro, but I grew up in the 40s and 50s as a Negro. It wasn't anything denigrating to us. All it meant was that our ancestors were brought to America through the slave trade from Africa. So we didn't think anything negative. We still looked forward to the American dream. And America was home to us. We thank them for coming over here. I know I do. I'm sorry how they came here, but I thank God that they did come. There's no way in the world I would want to be any place on the African continent today, which is something else. Here you have our young children being told that they're African Americans, and you ask them what country they're from, and they don't even know Africa is a continent and not a country. And that's the kind of lies that's going on in our government schools today, and it's being promoted by these political groups. Because all of these groups I mentioned to you all work together. They support each other. If they're having a rally, they all come. Or if they're uh, standing together on an issue, whatever the issue may be, affirmative action, illegal immigrant, doesn't matter. They all coalesce as one. Now, when I talk about black leaders, which is what I'm going to discuss, because I want you to know why you have multiculturalism and diversity in our schools today, and why you have corporations that's demanding that their workers uh, learn about diversity, which is so ridiculous. I've been on this earth more than half a century, and as long as I've been in America, it's always been diverse. So I've been wondering, what do they mean by that? But what they mean is that they want to divide us. They want to divide America and keep Americans hating each other. And they're teaching our children hatred and disdain for America by teaching them every other culture but their own. There's only one culture that should be taught in American schools, and that's American culture. <laughs> At any rate, uh, growing up as a Negro, you know, we really didn't have the kind of hatred that I see today. I can remember in high school, like high school children today will maybe go to the mall and window shop. Well, we would leave our high school and we'd go downtown to the big expensive stores and window shop. And there you have the colored only and the white only drinking fountains. And I can remember we, well, you know, in high school, you're little rebels anyway. So we would drink from the white fountain and the sales clerks would say, now you know you're supposed to drink colored water. And we'd say, if we wanted colored water, we'd drink Kool-Aid. And they would laugh. We'd all laugh about it. But if you would listen to the black leaders today, you would think we were lynched for not drinking out of the colored only fountain. And I'm saying that to make the point that even though you had laws that separated the people, uh, segregation, Jim Crow laws. The people themselves did not hate each other the way our children are being taught to hate other races today. And that is the difference. And that's how I grew up as a Negro. But then when I was leaving college and then in the 60s, our name was changed to black Americans. And the reason for that, that was the height of the black political movement. And so all of us then were to show that we acted as one, whether we were colored or Negro or black. So from then on, we became known as black Americans. Well, then when the media began to cover the fight against apartheid in South Africa, the Reverend Ain't Jesse Jackson called a press conference and told the media from now on, refer to us as African Americans. That's how we became African Americans. And the purpose for that was so that all of us would be in goose step with the African National Congress. Simple as that. But again, look at what it has done to our children and in our schools. In some of our public schools, in these uh, so-called inner city schools or minority schools, you would be hard pressed to find old glory flying in the classroom at all. But you will see foreign flags. And for us, they make up a flag. And they call it an African-American flag. They make up an African-American Pledge of Allegiance. They make up a culture. And I'm talking about Kwanzaa, a made-up culture. But it's been so accepted with, by so many people, even Texaco got in trouble for not recognizing it as a legal holiday for their employers. Totally made up. I worked with the guy at the school who made it up. At the time, in the 60s, he formed an organization called U.S. United Slaves. He and his United Slaves had a shootout with the Black Panthers in the cafeteria of UCLA, in which two people were killed. Later, he was sentenced for torturing two of his female followers. He resurfaced, changed his name. Now he's head of the Black Studies Department in one of our major universities in California, spruing more hatred. And you know, when we talk about these black history classes and African-American studies, that's nothing more than, again, promoting hatred. And there's not very much truth, if any at all, in some of the studies that they give these young people.